Hey y'all, I'm just bringing you up to speed on my Bayou Chopper. Uh, I've already done a video. I think I got you as far as gluing the handles on. And uh, now I'm at the point where I'm sanding the handles and shaping them. And I uh, have one more coat of true oil to put on, but we'll get to that. Plus I got a new tool I wanted to show you. See ya, and thanks for watching. Now it's starting to look like a handle. And what I used to get in these curves, radiuses, was uh, this little kit that I got at, <clears throat> I don't know, Lowe's or Home Depot. And that's it. Hooks into my airline. And uh, I just realized I had four packages of these that I bought at a yard sale, God, 10 years ago, and I just found them. They're 180 grit, but, and they're really just kind of, they're kind of crappy. They're made in Germany. Uh, they get dull really, really quick. They, but, you know, I think I got them for a, a buck a package or something like that years ago. And, uh, but for doing the job, that's just a whole lot of rubbing. I think uh, by noon I should have this, uh, and it's early morning. I got up at 3 this morning. I didn't come out here at 3, but uh, I got up at 3. Just couldn't sleep anymore. And uh, it's oh, probably 7.30. As soon as the post office opens up, I'm going to go mail uh, that package, of that knife, the sister to this. <laughs> this is a left-handed sheath see the belt loop uh if anybody wants this let me know 70 bucks uh that that includes the shipping but if not i'll take it to the gun show when i go all right back to sanding all right i'm down to 320 now i'm gonna go to uh 600 because uh it just looks so much nicer when you put a little work in here it takes less uh, true oil to make it look glassy and smooth. All right, I'm moving up to 400 <clears throat> and then 600 and the next shot you'll see will be uh, of a, a couple coats of true oil on this so we can get a real good look at that beautiful walnut. See you in a couple hours. One more coat. Bump chicka wah wah. Yeah, one more coat and then I'll put a lanyard on it. And I'll put an edge on it. And I do not know what this stain is. I've tried to blast it out and it won't blast out. And it doesn't feel like any different than the rest of it. But uh, I got a new glass bead blasting cabinet. I will uh, tape this up and put this in that cabinet and see if I can blast that stain out of there. It doesn't, it's not on the other side. I don't know why. Is it? No, it doesn't appear to be. All right, I'm gonna let this dry about three or four more hours, put the final coat on, and then uh, tonight I will go to sharpening it and I'm just going to put a basic uh, lanyard on here with that green and desert tan and then I'll make a I'm not sure still I'm not sure if I'm going to make a big leather sheath or try my hand at kydex I bought a sheet of kydex uh, I have the stuff to make a press I even bought some uh, grommets so if I do make a Kydex sheath, I can use grommets to hold it together. I don't know. I'll decide when I when I go out there and lay this knife on on the leather and see how much I'm going to have to use. I'm already into this seventy bucks and a whole bunch of handwork, and then probably thirty bucks worth of leather. 
that's a hundred dollars just to get this built and I'm gonna have to ask so much for it with the leather that's probably not gonna sell we'll see uh, I think I will put this video up oh I've got a nice somebody gave me a did I mention this maybe I have I can't remember what I said or not <clears throat> somebody gave me a piece of well, granite to do my leather stamping on and uh, I went and I had it cut like, for free and, uh, he was going to charge me 10 bucks but we got to talking about dogs and trucking and when it came time for me to pay and he, he said oh don't worry about it so uh, it was about this long and I had that much cut off of it and he cut it for free and somebody else gave this to me so I am getting into this just as cheap as possible Oh, and uh, Chris in Alberta and Phil in Indiana, the two fellas that bought the other knives, uh, something funny has happened. Well, it's not so funny. I made all these three sheaths at the same time, and I wet molded them to the uh, handles, you know, to fit around. See that circle there? Uh, I mean, it's hard as a rock, and the way you do that is you wet the leather, and then you mold them around the handle with a knife in there. Well, uh, I thought I had let all three of these sheaths dry out. And yesterday I took this to Tandy Leather to show my work off to the people that taught me how to do this. And when I took the knife out, the knife was just covered in rust. So I'm afraid that I did not let this leather dry out enough. I mean, that's what happened. I didn't let the leather dry out enough. So when you get your knives, I'm afraid they're going to have rust on them. And, uh, I mean, I took some steel wool and I spray it with some WD-40 and all the rust come right off. But, uh, if y'all don't want to do that, and if you're not happy with getting a knife with rust on it, and I wouldn't be, uh, I will happily refund your money and I'll even give you the shipping cost back. Because, uh, that was a big screw up on my part. I should have let them dry, I guess, at least a couple of days. Because it was dry on the outside, but there's just no way you can get air down inside that thing and... That's where the water was on the inside. So I uh, hope you see this. I sent Phil an, an email about that, and I don't know whether he got it or whether it went to spam. And uh, Chris, in Alberta, this is the first uh, time I'm telling you that. So money back if you're not happy. And uh, under these circumstances, I'll even pay for the shipping. Well, there's my bead blasting cabinet. And uh, boy, it's much larger than it looked like uh, on when I looked at it online. I got this through Amazon, and uh, it was the cheapest bee blasting cabinet I could find. Let me get it out there and uh, <coughs> get it up on my table here, and we'll have a look at it. Well, I'll tell you what, uh, it's not bad for the price I gave. I'm very happy. There's where you stick your hands in. Here's what you do. You put whatever you want to bead blast. You put in here, close the lid, and then you put your hands in these gloves here and and uh, look through here and bead blast whatever it is you want to bead blast. Comes with a light. Air filter. You hook the air up over here. Okay, well, uh, so far so good. I I stuck my hands in here and I can already tell that I'm going to cut this much off of the cuffs here and move them in. Otherwise, I'll never be able to get my hands in these things. But uh, that's the only alteration I'm gonna make. And this little stick-on plastic sheet goes uh, on this so it doesn't you know when that when it gets all scratched up you can remove it and put another one on all right i got a real mess in here even though i've been uh, sandblasting outside it uh blows back in and blows all over me and all righty so uh that's just one more step in the process of becoming a full-fledged knife maker.
Okay, dog check. Okay, dogs all present and accounted for. Okay, this is, uh, I put two coats on and I sanded it back down to bare wood with uh, 600 grit. Now I'm going to put probably three more coats on and it will look beauty -mous. Okay, see you in a bit. 